John Gould has been called the father of Australian ornithology. He and his wife Elizabeth did an enormous amount in the early 19th century to classify and depict our magnificent bird life. The Birds of Australia in seven volumes was published in 1848. And now Sue Taylor in Melbourne has brought out her own follow-up. Here's why. The 14th of September 2004 was the 200th anniversary of John Gould's birthday. Various events were held to celebrate the occasion. I attended a lecture at Museum Victoria. A learned academic from Philadelphia spoke to us about what a great contribution to Australian ornithology John Gould had made. At the end of the lecture, he invited questions. There were a few polite, forgettable contributions. But I do remember one question he was asked. Of all the hundreds of Australian birds that John Gould illustrated, how many are extinct today? The scholar from Philadelphia shook his head. He had no idea. Now, eight years later, I can answer that question. Of the hundreds of Australian birds illustrated by John Gould, there are just five that are extinct. They are the Norfolk Island kaka, the Paradise Parrot, the Robust White-Eye from Lord Howe Island, the Grey-Headed Blackbird of Norfolk Island and the Venus-Tinted Thrush of Lord Howe Island. So, of the five extinct Australian birds, only one came from the mainland, the Paradise Parrot. The other four all came from Lord Howe or Norfolk Island. Is it possible to learn anything from these extinctions? What caused them? The last known sighting of the Paradise Parrot was in 1927. Various experts provide different theories. We are told that it succumbed to destruction of habitat, caused by overgrazing, invasion by prickly pear, altered fire regimes and removal of termite mounds that the birds used for nesting. It is possible that the bird was already in decline when it was first discovered by John Gilbert in 1844. The Norfolk Island kaka survived being hunted by Polynesians prior to the 18th century, but succumbed to destruction of habitat in the mid-19th century, particularly loss of the large trees the kaka required for nesting hollows. The last known Norfolk Island kaka died in captivity in 1851. The other three extinct birds the robust white-eye, the grey-headed blackbird and the venus-tinted thrush, can all blame their extinction on the black rat. Black rats invaded Lord Howe in 1918 and arrived on Norfolk Island sometime during the Second World War. Lord Howe had made some effort to keep the island rat-free. Boats were forced to anchor offshore and goods and people were ferried ashore by tender. However, in 1918, the captain of the SS Macambo collapsed. The crew panicked and the ship ran aground on some rocks known today as the Macambo Rocks. Attempts were made to disembark the passengers, but one woman was lost overboard and drowned. The vessel was then run ashore on Ned's Beach while repairs were carried out. The rats made the most of the opportunity. Ever since, attempts have been made to control the rats. At last now, almost a hundred years later, consideration is being given to trying to eradicate them once and for all. The good news is that of these five extinct birds, three were subspecies, and other races of the species live on. Carcass are still found in New Zealand. The grey-headed blackbird and the venus-tinted thrush are both races of the island thrush, which is still found on islands throughout Southeast Asia and the Pacific. Indeed, the island thrush can be found today in Australian Territory on Christmas Island. The bad news is that of all the birds that Gould illustrated, another two are possibly extinct. The white-chested white-eye from Norfolk Island and the southern race of the starfinch. A further eight are critically endangered, 25 are endangered and 19 are vulnerable. The demise of the white-chested white-eye is again blamed on black rats, as well as predation by cats. It may have been extinct since 1979, when there were several sightings during a comprehensive survey of the island. Since then, some sightings have been claimed, but none has been confirmed. As the white-chested white-eye looked very similar to both the silver-eye and the slender-billed white-eye that also inhabit Norfolk Island, inexperienced observers could easily be confused. Suffice it to say that several serious surveys have failed to find it. 
The southern race of the starfinch succumbed to overgrazing and trampling of its riparian habitat by cattle. It lived in central Queensland, but it was never common. There were only 25 unequivocal sightings from 1835 until 1990. The last confirmed sighting was in 1995. None has been seen since. So the total of extinct and possibly extinct Australian birds, illustrated by John Gould, is seven. Five from Lord Howe and Norfolk Islands, and two from the mainland, both from Queensland, and neither very abundant. The eight critically endangered Australian birds, illustrated by Gould, comprise four seabirds, plus the orange-bellied parrot, the northern race of the eastern bristlebird, the helmeted honeyeater, and the regent honeyeater. The seabirds are the Australian breeding populations of the wandering albatross, the grey-headed albatross, the blue petrel and the soft-plumaged petrel. Of these eight critically endangered birds, six are subspecies and only two are species, the orange-bellied parrot and the regent honeyeater. These two birds are in dire trouble. Populations have fallen to drastically low levels. It is estimated that there are only 50 orange-bellied parrots left in the wild and around 350 regent honeyeaters. It is difficult to know what more could be done to bring these birds back from the brink of extinction. Recovery teams have been working diligently for years, doing everything possible to ensure the birds' future. It's interesting that neither of these birds is sedentary. The parrot is migratory, breeding in summer in Tasmania and wintering on the mainland, and the honeyeater is nomadic, moving around the box ironbark forests of New South Wales and Victoria in response to the availability of flowering eucalypts. An alarming 75% of its habitat has been cleared since European settlement. Of the six subspecies that are critically endangered, three have global populations, that means that there is no concern for the future of the species. However, one is endangered and two are vulnerable. The endangered bird is the eastern bristlebird. There are two races of eastern bristlebird. The northern race occupies dense coastal mountain heaths around the Queensland-New South Wales border and the southern race is found on the New South Wales-Victorian border. Both races are in trouble. There are 2,500 birds in the southern race but only 50 individuals remain in the northern race. The species as a whole is endangered. The biggest current threat is bushfire. Cats and foxes are also a problem. Historically, the bird has suffered from loss of habitat due to land clearing for residential development, forestry and agriculture. The global populations of both wandering and grey-headed albatross are vulnerable. This is because of long-line fishing and chicks ingesting marine debris and fishing hooks. Commercial fishermen drop their long lines, sometimes as long as 150 kilometres, with up to 3,000 baited hooks per line. Seabirds see the bait, take it, and are dragged underwater and drowned. The Australian government, and indeed the fishing industry, are to be congratulated for regulating longline fishing in Australian waters. Sadly, seabirds do not know where Australian waters begin and end. All the Australian races of critically endangered seabirds breed on Macquarie Island, seen as some of the world's worst environmental degradation. In the 19th century, sealers and whalers introduced weakers, cats and rabbits to Macquarie Island to provide food for shipwrecked sailors. Why they needed to provide food when there were so many penguins, seals and sea lions that they killed with gay abandon is not clear. They slaughtered these animals and presumably accidentally introduced rats and mice. Scientists witnessed the destruction wrought on the island and feared for its future. Finally, action was taken and cats were eradicated from Macquarie Island in 1990. Instead of delivering environmental improvement, this led to havoc. Without the cats, rabbits and rodents bred up. This provided easy food for skewers, which also increased their numbers. Rabbits caused erosion and landslips. Eventually, after the Tasmanian and Commonwealth governments finally finished bickering about who was going to pay for it, a rabbit and rodent eradication program was commenced in 2010. The program continues, but I'm delighted to say that already it is difficult to find a bunny or a rodent on the island. 
Soft plumage petrels were all but annihilated from Macquarie Island. A single chick was found in the summer of 2006-07. With the eradication of rats, they are expected to return. Meanwhile, they may be in the process of establishing a colony on Matsuka Island off Tasmania's rugged southern coast. While Australian breeding populations are critically small, the global population is estimated at 5 million and the species is not of concern. While the Australian breeding population of blue petrels is critically endangered, it is estimated that globally there are 80,000 adult birds and there is no concern about the future of the species. Blue petrels are already returning to breed on Macquarie Island, albeit in small numbers so far. The critically endangered helmeted honeyeater, Victoria's avifaunal emblem, is down to a population of 58 birds. It lives in tall eucalypt riparian forest in central Victoria. It is a race of the common yellow tufted honeyeater, which is not considered to be in any danger at all. So of the five extinct, two possibly extinct, and eight critically endangered Australian birds illustrated by John Gould, nine of the 15 were found on islands and six were found in the eastern states, Queensland, New South Wales, Victoria and Tasmania. Isn't it interesting that there are none from Central or Western Australia? It's not as if John Gould did not illustrate birds from all over Australia. He himself visited South Australia with Charles Sturt and John Gilbert collected for him from Swan River and Port Essington. It seems we must conclude that Europeans have done most severe damage to bird life in the eastern states and on islands, particularly Lord Howe, Norfolk and Macquarie. How would John Gould react if he knew that of the Australian birds he illustrated, so many were now in trouble? We know that Gould shot all his specimens and collected countless nests and eggs, apparently without consideration of the future of the species. He collected far more than he needed for scientific purposes and was always aware of the monetary value of his collection and happy to capitalise on it when it suited him. Having said this, however, I believe that Gould would be appalled to learn of the fate of the beautiful birds he illustrated. He was quite a conservationist for his day. He spoke out against using feathers in millinery, fashion trimmings and muffs, particularly mentioned the great crested grebe. He warned Australians against introducing trout to our then pristine waterways. He wrote about the necessity of protecting the golden eagle, osprey, marsh harrier and nightingale. He worried about the future of the thylacine and pleaded against wanton killing of red kangaroos by pastoralists. Gould would not be pleased to know that 15 of the delightful Australian birds he illustrated were in serious trouble. When I commenced this project, I had feared that there would be more than a handful of Australian birds illustrated by John Gould that were in serious trouble. So I suppose I should be pleased that there are only 15 in serious trouble and that only five of these 15 are species. But extinction is forever, and five is five too many. From the mainland, we have lost the beautiful Paradise Parrot. We have lost a white eye from Lord Howe and probably another from Norfolk Island, which, with the wonderful benefit of hindsight, it seems to me, could have been saved. John Gould would not be happy about that. But isn't it interesting how many Australians, like Sue Taylor, do care about these little creatures? Her book, John Gould's Extinct and Endangered Birds of Australia, has just been published by the National Library, and it's magnificent. Next week, Rob Morrison from Adelaide with news of who's just been announced as Skeptic of the Year. I'm Robin Williams.